Welcome to our lecture online and now we're going to combine all what we just learned in the previous three videos into a single ideal gas equation. Now when we say ideal gas what that means is we're ignoring the volume of the actual molecules in the gas and we're ignoring all of the interactive electrical interactive forces between the molecules. So if you ignore that and in most cases there's no problem doing that we can talk about an equation that relates the state variables into a single equation. Now with, um, with Charles' law, we realized that the volume is proportional to temperature. With Amundsen's law, we realized that the pressure is proportional to the temperature. And with Boyle's law, we realized that the pressure is proportional to 1 over the volume, which means that pressure times volume is proportional to 1. If we then apply all that into a single equation, we can say that somehow these three combined mean or indicate that the pressure times the volume is equal to some constant times the temperature. And it turns out that constant proportionality is known as the gas constant R. And we also have to account for uh, the amount of gas that we have in our sample. And so we have to throw in there the number of moles of the gas. So this equation then turns into something we call PV equals NRT, N being the number of moles in the sample, and R being the gas constant. R is equal to 8.31. Uh, joules per mole uh, per Kelvin. So that's our constant that we'll be using in the equation. And so now we're able to relate the gas in one state to a gas in another state. Now, since N and R would be constant in any given example or any given sample of gas, we can then say that PV over the temperature, if I put in the temperature over here, is equal to NR is equal to a constant, which means that P1 V1 over T1, so the pressure, the volume, and temperature of a gas at some, in some state, in the initial state, must equal the pressure, volume, and temperature in the final state. And so we can say that P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. And this equation right here, in this format, will allow you to solve for any kind of situation where a gas changes from one state to another state without individually applying either uh, Boyle's law, uh, Amonton's law, or Charles' law. It's just simple and easier just to go to this one every single time, no matter what is, is happening. So here I have a, a quick example for us. Here we have a, a gas that has uh, atmospheric pressure of 1.2 atmosphere, a volume of 3.8 liters, and a temperature of 250K. Uh, initially, and then it changes, so in other words, the pressure increases to 3.4 atmospheres, the volume increases to 4.5 liters, what, we, what would be the temperature of this gas at its final state? So we'll go ahead and use this equation right here. So what we need to do is solve this equation for T2, so we're going to move T2 over here, P1, V1 down here, and T1 over here. So this equation then becomes T2 by moving the T2 over to the top left is equal to, we still have P2 V2 on the right. We're going to move P1 V1 down here to the denominator. So we write this P1 V1 and this T1 will diagonally come across here and go to the numerator T1. <clears throat> now we plug in all the values that we have and notice that typically you wouldn't mix atmospheres and liters and Kelvin together. You would want to transfer from atmospheres to Pascals from liters to cubic meters, but since we have it in this form of the equation, you really don't need to do that. You can just leave it as is. So let's plug in the numbers. Pressure 2 is 3.4 atmospheres. Uh, volume 2 would be 4.5 liters divided by pressure 1. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the units in there for you so you can see that the units really don't matter because they cancel out. So let me try this again. P2 would be 3.4 atmospheres. Uh, volume 2 would be 4.5 liters divided by pressure 1, which would be 1.2 atmospheres. And volume 1 would be 3.8 liters. And then finally here, for temperature 1, we put 250 Kelvin. And then you can see that the atmospheres cancel, the liters cancel. We're just left with Kelvin. And now with a calculator, we can find out the answer, 3.4. Uh, times 4.5 times 250 divided by 1.2 and divided by 3.8 and we get 839 so temperature 2 
equals, hmm, did I do that right? Yeah, that would be much bigger. Oh, that would be bigger as well. So yeah, it looks about right. So 839 Kelvin as the final temperature of this gas undergoing a state change from the initial state to a final state where the state variables change. And so notice that you don't have to go to these individual relationships. You can just simply jump to this one right here and use this equation for all change of state uh, problems within a gas when the pressure, the temperature, or the volume changes.